Viruses are capable of being one of the most dangerous things for larger life forms, despite them being among the smallest replicating entities that exist, and are so simple that they blur the lines between what is living and chemistry. As they are so small, it is difficult to know where they came from, or how long they have been infecting creatures for. But with the field of genomics advancing all the time, the question of their origin may have an answer, or at least a few different answers. They could have been younger than cells, or they may be ancient and could be a relic from an ancient world where virus-like creatures that are not quite dead but not quite alive were more common. Cells are broken up into three categories, Eukarya, Bacteria, and Archaea. Eukaryotic cells are the group that animal, plant, and fungus cells belong to, as well as many single-celled organisms. They are very complex, being made up of multiple layers, and are like their own little colony, whereas Bacteria and Archaea, also known as prokaryotic cells, are much smaller and simpler in comparison. However, Despite being much simpler organisms, they still have all the necessary equipment contained inside the cell to decode their DNA, create proteins, and reproduce. But viruses take simplicity to new heights. They are so simple that they are not even able to reproduce on their own, and although come in many different forms, are usually not much more than a bit of genetic material in a shell. This material is sometimes only made up by a few genes or less and its surrounding is just a coat of protein that itself is sometimes covered in a membrane. They have the genetic information inside of them to create new viruses, but lack the machinery that other cells have that decode and create. Because of this, viruses have to infect a host in order to reproduce, and their inability to self-replicate is one of the main reasons they are not considered to be living. Some viruses target animals or plants, while others infect bacteria, but all known viruses are parasitic. Cells in the vast majority of living creatures store their genetic information in DNA, but when they actually use this DNA to order certain functions around the cell, like to create proteins, they have to turn it into a similar but different chemical known as RNA. Like DNA, RNA can also store and replicate genetic information, and it is used a bit like a messaging device between different areas of the cell. When a virus comes into contact with a cell, it will inject its own RNA inside it, which the host will unknowingly start to decode as if it was coming from its own DNA. This genetic material will tell the cell to create more of the virus. So the virus is basically hijacking the cell's means to reproduce to turn it into a virus-making factory. Different viruses do this in different ways, but the principle is always the same. So finding out when and how viruses evolved, or how long they have been around for, is not easy because they evolve so quickly and are so small. However, they do have a sort of fossil record, if at least not in the conventional sense, as there are marks left over from ancient viruses, just not in the ground and instead in the DNA of living creatures. As explained, the vast majority of living creatures store their genetic information in DNA, but when it comes time to use it, they convert it into RNA. However, the majority of viruses are not like this, and their actual genome is just made up of RNA. Very high profile human viral diseases like Ebola, flu, and COVID-19 are all caused by RNA viruses. RNA is much less stable and more prone to mutating than DNA, which is probably why most cells don't use it to store their genetic material. Having their genetic material stored in RNA means that viruses are able to infect their host very easily, skipping this conversion. But the price is that their genome mutates much faster. This is why viruses evolve so quickly, and why they can infect one species of animal and then adapt in a relatively short period of time to infect a completely different animal. Some viruses, like HIV, don't just hijack the host cell's machinery to make more viruses, but will actually copy their genetic material into the genome of their host. The group of viruses that do this are called retroviruses, and when they become integrated into the DNA of a plant or animal, they are only able to mutate and evolve at the same rate as the host. A lot of the time, this foreign DNA will be removed in a few generations by natural selection, but sometimes it can actually help the animal, most commonly in the defense against similar viruses than the one the DNA came from. If the DNA gives the animal an advantage or presents no disadvantage, then these little bits of viral information can last for millions of years, and can be found in living animals like footprints left over from an ancient virus. This phenomena can be used to date viruses, 
If a sequence of viral DNA is found in two different animal species, then the virus they got it from must predate their common ancestor. For example, marmosets and humans both contain some genetic information that looks very similar to what you would find in the Bornaviridae family of viruses that can cause certain neurological disorders in warm-blooded animals. Humans and marmosets most likely shared a common ancestor around 55 million years ago, so these viruses must date all the way back to the early primates that existed at this time. However, some genetic material from the family of viruses has also been found in tenrec and elephant DNA, which shared a common ancestor even longer ago, probably over 90 million years ago. This means that the origin of these viruses may date back to the early placental mammals in the late Cretaceous, so they may have been infecting mammals since the dinosaurs were around. But there are groups of viruses today that are thought to have origins dating back even further than this. Braconid wasps are parasitic insects that lay their eggs inside a host so that they have something to eat when they are born. Most of these wasps kill the spider or insect that they lay their eggs inside, but horrifyingly, some species don't kill their host. The problem is that if they lay their eggs inside an animal that is still alive, its immune system will start to attack the eggs. Many Braconid wasp species like Cotesia have formed a symbiotic relationship with a family of viruses known as Brachoviruses. When the wasps attack their victim, they will inject their eggs along with this virus that will suppress the immune system of the animals they are attacking and stop it from attacking their eggs. There is evidence that brachoviruses date back to around 190 million years ago in the early Jurassic, so currently living virus families may date back to almost 200 million years ago, but it is thought that viruses themselves probably evolved even longer ago than this, most likely billions of years ago possibly even predating multiple celled life. There are several hypotheses for how viruses evolved that are championed by different scientists and hotly debated. One hypothesis is that viruses used to be free living and descended from cells or cell-like creatures that used to be more complex, but then reduced in complexity as they became parasitic and more reliant on their host. This hypothesis was thought of after the discovery of a group of viruses known as the megaviruses that infect amoebas. One of these viruses is named Mimivirus and is considerably larger than most viruses, being almost as large as some bacteria. It is not only really big, but has the genes to create certain complex chemicals that are needed to reproduce. Some scientists believe that these genes are left over from a time when these large viruses were more complex and acted more like free living cells, and that most other viruses have their origins in more complex life forms as well, but have just reduced in complexity even more. Some scientists believe that viruses may have originated from a smaller part of a cell, but escaped. When cells are using RNA to send messages throughout the cell, sometimes they use it to copy and paste a bit of genetic material in a different part of their genome. The way that this is done is very similar to the way that retroviruses copy their information into the host cell. It is thought that viruses may be the descendants of a bit of RNA that escaped the cell during this process, and then went on to infect another cell. The final hypothesis behind the origin of the virus is that the reason they are so simple is because they are ancient, and that they actually predate cellular life. One of the most popular theories surrounding how life started is that the world was filled with self-replicating strands of RNA before the evolution of DNA or proteins. In 1971, an organism that was even smaller and more simpler than a virus was discovered infecting a potato, and it was named a viroid. Viroids reproduce and function in a very similar way to viruses by finding a host cell to do all the work for them. But they are not the same. Whereas viruses are a bit of genetic material in a shell, viroids are basically just a bit of genetic material. To be more precise, they have no protein coating and usually just consist of an RNA genome. They are the smallest replicating things that are currently known to exist and blur the lines between life and chemical reactions. Viruses may have evolved from viroids, and viroids may be a relic from this previous RNA world. And as more complex life forms started to evolve, they may have evolved to parasite on them. The problem with this theory is that at the moment, all viruses are only known to exist as pathogens, and there are no organisms like this that can reproduce on their own or self-replicate. Scientists are able to get RNA strands to reproduce in a lab, but they are not sure how they would be able to do this in the wild and more research will be needed to find out. 
so viruses may have very few redeemable qualities, either for keeping us from leaving the house, or wasps using them for their nightmare inducing life cycle, but their existence could teach us things about the simplest life forms that existed billions of years ago. Thank you so much for watching. A big shout out to all my patrons, including the big contributors like Ken Ham, Sammy Voz, Knight Runner, Grim Marshall, Green Fours, and Brandon Klopp. If you enjoy content like this, then consider becoming a patron as well.